Hi, this is Kim, Wild Women Studios. Uh, today's video is basic pendulum use, like 101, like right out of the box. Um, this one is for a, a, a client, and so I, I'm, I am doing this video with her pendulum, and then I'm going to pack it up and send it to her. So I have already cleared this pendulum, and um, she chose one that, that is the tarot birth cards, um, and this particular one is the Hierophant and Temperance. Uh, you can go to Tarot School and type in your, uh, or just do a Google search for Tarot Birth Cards and Tarot School will come up and it's got the calculator and tell you how to do it and so you can figure out yours too. Um, but that's what she chose. So it is the Hierophant on one side and Temperance on the other. And I have run a deep pendulum clearing on this, which means that I've used my pendulum and programmed this pendulum to have all the properties of the deep pendulum clearing, which is one of the cool things that you can do with a pendulum. So right out of the box, it'll, it'll come with this and it'll come with a little bag. And so you want to pick it up. Uh, my pendulums are unusual in that they have a fob on them um, at the top. They all have a ceramic fob um um the tops the top the fob and the bob are made out of a clay body which works almost like organite does in protecting you from um oh just the energies that are floating around in your environment and that kind of thing um the larger the pendulum bob the more oomph it's gonna have um, this is just one of our small dowsers. It's great to start with. It it works excellent for dowsing and doing commands. Um, if you get into healing with it, you might want to go with a a larger pendulum. I have some that are made to remove energies like this. This is still a small pendulum, um, but just because of the shape of the bob, this is an Osiris design. It, it is going to be a little bit more effective for um, healing in that respect and I've got them going all the way up to very large pendulums and um, even some other designs like uh, you know the goddesses that whoo the goddesses are very good for healing particularly uh, women's energies that kind of thing but we're just talking about dowsing today since this is a getting started um, okay so what you do is you can hold it by the the fob this is how they're meant to be held like this and right out of the box you want to establish a language with your pendulum so it would be show me yes and typically it swings forward back that's the way I, I kind of program them from the factory to work but other people get different answers so you need to establish a connection Ask the pendulum to look, work with you. Like, will you work with me? Yes. Okay. And then you say, show me yes, which is forward back in this case. And then show me no. And it'll take a second to catch up and swing left to right for no. Additional commands are if you're going to remove negative energies, you want to go counterclockwise like that and if you're instilling energies which you always want to do if you remove energies and just leave it open then other non-beneficial energies can come in and take over the void so you always want to put your intent in any void that you create by clearing so you'd want to instill energies and so you'd say and so you'd swing clockwise like that now I'm commanding all this with my head <clears throat> which you absolutely can do and should do to get started, right? You want to be able to make it move that way. Um, but for actual dowsing and the answers, you're going to have to go a little higher. So at first I would practice just establishing a connection with your pendulum and being able to get it to move. If you're not able to get it to move right out of the box, give it a little nudge. It's perfectly all right. Get some motion going.
okay and then establish a connection the the it, like many things the more you bond with it the the better it's going to work for you so it, i carry mine in my pocket all the time you can sleep with it in the little bag under your pillow that kind of thing uh just keep it on your person so it bonds with you as recommended now what we're doing is we're establishing a dialogue that is not just you using your head to command things um it, we're what we're trying to do is bypass your conscious brain which will lie to you and give you false answers and put up resistance and is your ego mind we want to move past that and get to your higher self um it is always recommended that you protect yourself and that's probably going to be a separate video but for just right now to protect yourself you pretend you're tree you ground down into the ground uh, looking for your earth star chakra, which is down there. Pretend you're a tree. Grow roots. Grow down and out. Take deep breath. And then you also want to open up the your crown chakra up here and allow pure divine white light to come in. So you're a conduit. You allow the energy to come in and go all the way down into the ground. And you allow the earth energies to come up and go out your crown chakra. From this, you want to create a bubble around yourself that is divine white light and is protection. And that is a real down, dirty, oversimplified form of protection. Um, but like I said, that is protecting yourself is a whole nother video all unto itself. And there and there's so much you can do with the pendulum. This is just going to get way out of hand if I keep talking about that. So this is just using the dowsing pendulum, the small dowser from the get-go, just right out of the box. So um, investigate how to protect yourself if you're not aware of how to do that. Now, um, we want answers from upstairs, the higher up. So this can be your higher self, um, which loves to answer questions for for you and give you all that information you can also reach the collective there are many unseen energies that are beneficial and around and willing to help but you have to request that they are beneficial uh, uh, just to make sure um, with your dowsing or you go to the highest of high if you want your answers you know from the highest person up the chain you can ask for your answers from the highest high or you can request to to clock into certain energies or frequencies or archetypes that kind of thing but once again that's getting out of the beginning realm of of this so if i was going to ask questions i would ask for my higher self or my guides um if you are not familiar with your guides everybody's got them but once again that is another pendulum video to just discuss discussing how to find your gods with them so we just want to get you started and moving with this pendulum so i would walk around the house i would connect i would ground and connect and then i'd walk around the house and just state real obvious things that you know the answers to um is the sky blue yes and and get an, a yes answer you want to really establish the the rapport and the conversation with the pendulum and make sure you're getting correct answers and the easiest way to do is to ask the obvious okay um is my shirt does it have blue on it yes am i wearing any red today no i have no red on at all today um what else could i ask um well, it, it, just go through your house and ask really obvious things, you know, and, and establish that dialogue. Um, and that is the first basic steps for working with this pendulum. Now, once you've established dialogue, you can ask all kinds of questions. Um, the biggest thing is if your questions are ambiguous, your answers will be ambiguous. So you want to ask questions that are as specific as possible. And we do what's called um, a, like a question thread. So when I douse, I always keep a, a pad of paper and, and, a, and a notepad, and I write my questions down. Um, and as a matter of fact, I, I, had a, um, I had a question thread I was working on um, 
yesterday in my notebook here, and I was it, it felt like a new guide was coming in, and of course I can't find it. Um, but it would be like you'd ask questions. Say it was a spirit guide. Um, do I have a new spirit guide wanting to to be in touch with me? Okay, and see how vigorous this is spinning. I haven't done the work to talk to the spirit guide yet, but somebody is wanting to come in hard and heavy um, in that regard. Now, um, you can also use charts, and and particularly for yes-no questions, a, print, a percentage and probability chart is a fabulous thing to have. Um, I have worked with people for years, and so I have a number of different charts. Um, one of my favorite people is Melissa Tessero, and she does these fabulous charts, and all of them have a percentage probability chart down here in the bottom. If you don't have one, you can do an arc on a just a piece of paper, just draw it in and do zero and 150, and then if you want to, you can put the other numbers in. But that is much more accurate than asking just yes, no questions. So um, I'm going to ask and use the percentage probability. What is the percentage and probability that I will connect with a new spirit guide today? Okay, and it went over there to the 100%. So I'm going to get to that work sometime today. Um, and so I would use that for most questions. Everybody has free will, and so nothing is written in stone, particularly if you're asking about a situation or things that are liable to change like that, because people do have free will. But this will give you a much better idea. Or if you're wanting to know if it, you know, is it going to rain on my house today? Now, if I'm going to say, is it going to rain, um, that could be anywhere in the world. And so the answer would absolutely be yes. But I said, what if I ask, um, what is the probability that it is going to rain on my house today? Because I'm in my house, so that would affect me. And that's where it might rain. So, and, okay, my answer is 80%. And it's already rained here today. So the, the chances are, you know, likely it'll rain again a little later um, going forward. Now, I wanted to talk to you just briefly about once you've established rapport with your pendulum and have good conversation going on. Um, you can do a, a, a questioning thread on anything you want, but you break it down into very small bites and very specific questions. I always ask, is it in my best interest to? I never say, should I? Because should is so subjective. Whose should is that? Is that my should? Is that somebody else's should? That, that just puts too much pressure on the whole situation. But if you want to know if something is good or not for you, you, you say, is this in my best interest? So, um, is it in my best interest to eat Chinese food today? I'm having a craving. So, yes it is. I probably should go get some Chinese food. Um, or is it in my best interest to take this vitamin today. It, it, you know, you can douse your supplements. You can douse your food. There, there are so many things that you can do once you've established rapport with the pendulum. And uh, this is another chart from Melissa Tessero um, that her stuff is fabulous. She's on, um, it's the Divining Path on Etsy, Melissa Tessero. And she sells her charts, her books. She has courses, all kinds of stuff. It's great. Um, but this is from one of her courses. And you can use, um, this is just ideas for, for dowsing and healing with a pendulum. So dowsing is asking questions and getting answers from the collective. You can also send healing with a pendulum, much like a Reiki practitioner would send out healing um, with, you can do a pendulum, Just they would just use their, their minds to do it. But um, in my case, I'm Reiki trained, but I always use a pendulum as well. Um, if you're a, a, a witch, practitioner. You can use it to call the corners. You can use it to smudge a room. You can use it to create a cone of power. If, you're, if your altar is very small or you're working in private and you want a, a circle around you, um, it is all your intent. So right now I'm intending a circle of protection around myself. And see, it's swinging right along with me. And in that case, I would ask for, you know, 
a, a, a circle of protection from for my highest and greatest good to surround me and you wait for it to spin out. Okay, so sometimes that'll take a few seconds. And then it'll go back to the resting position or the back and forth. Okay, so you let it spin out if it's doing that. Um, I think I already covered that if you're instilling energies, you spin clockwise. If you're removing negative energies, you spin counterclockwise. Um, so you can also... I'm just reading this. I'm just going to read a few of these from Melissa's sheet for additional ideas. Um, you can um, clear limiting beliefs. You can clear brain fog. Uh, you can do goal setting. Um, you can clear past past life fears. Um, you can as access the Akashic records. Um, you can do inner child healing. You can use it for shadow work. Uh, you can clear toxic past life energies. You can also use it in the physical plane. You can clear toxins in your food or your water. Um, you can um, test which food is best for you. Um, set up by your parameters. Say you have an allergy to something or... Um, um, or, or sensitive and don't want that in your food, you can douse. Does does this food have this thing that I don't care to consume? And um, check that. Sometimes, even if it's, it, sometimes I use it if I'm at the grocery store and I don't even want to, uh, you know, I don't know what to do for dinner. I'll, I'll ask, is is chicken my best choice for dinner? Or is, you know, is, is vegetarian my best choice for dinner? And you can ask that as well. Um, you can do space clearing. You can clear your house. It can work like a smudge spray if you go from room to room and you you'd spend counterclockwise and remove any non-beneficial energies that are in the room that are affecting you. Yeah, non-beneficial or detrimental energies in the room that are affecting you. And you let it spin out. And then universe hates a void, so you always want to and still your intent so any energies that have been removed fill the room with beneficial energies for my highest and greatest good it's always about your highest and greatest good your highest and greatest self um you there's some conflict on whether uh, dowsing for others for me i feel like if i'm dowsing asking questions in another's field that that is not something that i do because it, it seems unethical. That said, I do send healing to people for their high, to their highest self for their highest and greatest good as appropriate. So if the healing is not appropriate, if I've sent something to somebody that is not appropriate for them to have, then their higher selves and the upstairs management will block that healing from happening. It just doesn't matter what my intent is at that point. So there are some ethics involved in this, but this is just really just to get you going out of the box with this so you can start to build a rapport with it. Now, um, I plan to do a, a few more of these videos as topics come up. Um, so I'm going to do one about um, finding your spirit guides. That's that's a topic that's near and dear, and there's several ways to go about finding your spirit guides, but the pendulum can be very beneficial, particularly if you've had a meditation where you kind of feel like you're, somebody's coming through and you're not sure you can, you can ask questions all day long about it. Um, they just need to be well thought out and yes, no, or if you're using a chart, it can be percentage probability. Now, once you've built up a rapport with your pendulum, there's all kinds of things you can do. There are pendulum charts that you can get all day long that look like this. Um, for This one is uh, negative energy, so it, it tells you step by step how to clear negative energies out of your field. Um, this one is blocks and fears, things that might be be trapping you in your head. It's got, you can test on one side, you can test with a percentage probability to see what it is before you start. Then you clear it, and then you, you come down here and you test again. And it's even got a place where you can mark it off with a dry erase marker so you know um, before and after if you're doing healings like that. 
So this is, like I said, this is just beginner, just to get you started. There are so many things that you can do with it. You, I've used it to pick tarot cards. I've used it to clear energies. I've used it to decide what to have for dinner. Uh, it, the, it's just it's just endless what you can do once you get started. Now, um, oh, one other thing. Like I said, my pendulums come with the fob up here, and it's intended to be held like this. Okay, but lots of people like to choke up on theirs, and if you choke up on it, you're going to get, the the shorter the cord, the more immediate the swing is going to be, so the answers are going to be much quicker. It's agreeing with me. That's why it's swinging. So the answers will be much quicker if you choke down on it like that, but I, I you know, I just, I, I designed it like this. I feel like the, the, the ceramic fob helps take some of the energies that might be coming through the pendulum and grounds them out. And so I, I consider it an additional form of protection. It also worked just fine being held in your palm and do the same thing. Um, it's just the way I like it. But you, you play around with it and get comfortable. Um, that's the whole point. This particular one is raw, it, meaning that the the clay does not have a glaze on top of it so you could put um, essential oils on it if you wanted to and over time it is also going to pick up the oils from your hands and will develop a nice patina and these wear very very well um, I may have mine in my pocket I yes I do I, I carry mine almost all the time this is the same one I've had for years and if you look at it it is it's got green on it around here from the metals rubbing and I've lost a chunk and and I've actually restrung it once already because the wires broke off but I've carried this one for five years now maybe um I have a couple of other ones but this is my preferred pocket pendulum I just I, I bonded with it the most and it's the one I feel is most accurate uh, and then I have a whole bowl sitting over here of um other ones that I use in my office, some are slightly larger, but I have a, I have a whole bunch of them. Um, most of them are not listed on my Etsy store, so if you're seeing this video and interested in one, please contact me and I will, you know, let you do some personal shopping. That one's got an angel on it and angel wings. So we have angels, I have animals, Team Earth. Everybody wants to be an extraterrestrial. Nobody wants to be a <laughs> Team Earth. So, this is the planet you're on. Love it. Okay, so I hope this gave you a good idea of just how to get started right off, at, you know, right out of the box and answered some, some of the questions. Um, you can tap into all kinds of energies. Um, the first thing and most important thing is to establish um, a dialogue. You need to know yes, you need to know no, you need to trust your answers, and then there's a whole list of things if you don't feel like you're trusting your answers that you can check for. Uh, most of it is not being grounded enough or asking ambiguous questions, but it, not getting correct an answers is, is another video unto itself. So just right out of the box, what I want you to do is show me yes, show me no, will you work for me, and then do that a whole lot. Ask questions all the time until you feel comfortable and feel like you're getting correct answers and and feel like you have established a rapport. Then come back and we'll discuss more videos going forward or I will send you more links if you have purchased you know um, packages from me. But this was just to get you started, right out of the box. Hope it was helpful. Um, for the person this is intended to, it has been programmed with a deep pendulum clearing, and I am putting in an envelope and sending it out to you right after this video. All right. Thanks for stopping by.